What's going on? RGI James back, baby. What's going on? Tired? So like, <laughs> I, I can tell you too. Like, lack of like low energy is like, hello. <laughs> See, but I'm tired because I went out yesterday. They did uh, this this little venue. Um, they were holding a Mardi Gras celebration there. So it was. It started like around 2 p.m. <laughs> so of course we got there, and then you know, one drink too many. But it was kind of funny because um, one of my good friends was there with his, you know, his family. And in the area they have food trucks, so they got each food truck different food. So you could get lobster rolls in one area, you could get chicken in another food truck, so on and so forth. So he decided, you know, let me go ahead and get my kids some nachos. He comes back with the nachos. We're sitting on like a picnic table. And I don't know how it happened, but somehow the nachos got dropped on the floor. So it like it fell onto the picnic table and then it's like the rest of it fell all over the floor. So he comes and he's like, what happened? And they're like, oh, man, you know, the fucking the, the nachos fell. We're going to have to get the kids some a new one, whatever the case may be. So I, you know, I looked and I was like, yo, we probably need to clean this up because, you know, it's like an outside venue. It's like a park similar to a park and everything else. So I went and like got one of the workers and said, hey, can you clean this? Because I didn't want them, you know, we're customers. So I didn't want them to, f them to look at us to be like, damn, look at these fucking pigs that they just left the fucking nachos on the floor. So my boy, <laughs> my boy bends down to start cleaning it up. And as he's bending down, he's wearing a polo shirt. His collar is dipping into the, the nacho shit that's on the bench. So as he's going down, his collar is getting all nasty. And we're telling him, we're like, yo, stop cleaning because your shirt, you have nacho everywhere. Like it's all over. So he's like dipping down as he comes up. <laughs> this, mother this motherfucker got a big fucking cheese, the beans, <laughs> the fucking the peppers, all on his collar. And he's one of those that you know I gotta look proper. So if you if there's a stain on the shirt, the day is done. Like this is this is bad. You know what I'm saying? And lo and behold, he was like, "We're going home," because <laughs> he had a big fucking nacho stain on his thing, man. It was it was hilarious. But yeah, I'm, I'm tired for that. But there's, there's a, I'm gonna go on a rant right now. I'm gonna go on a rant because there was a conversation that I was having. It was with some, with some fathers, and you know, they're, they, whenever their childs are like in high school and stuff like that, you know, they try to keep them sort of distracted, so they put them into sports. Sometimes they start at a young age, they put them to basketball, hockey, baseball, whatever the case would be, they put them into sports, right? So. As you know, as you progress through high school, you start playing for varsity, junior varsity, things like that. So, of course, these kids don't work. Everything's being bought by mom and dad. You know what I'm saying? Your uniform, oh, dad, mom, I want these cleats because fucking such and such player is wearing them. Or I want this hat because such and such athlete is wearing them, whatever the case would be. Oh, and if it's baseball, oh, Hey, dad, mom, this baseball bat, it makes me hit harder or whatever. Like, I don't understand the physics behind a fucking... To me, a bat is a bat. But apparently, there's different ways that the bat could help the player. Got it. So, of course, these bats go 500, 600 bucks. They're not, they're not cheap fucking bats. You know what I'm saying? And, of course, who's getting them? Mom and dad is getting them, right? Because they're the ones that are working. They're the ones that bring home the check. All you're doing is for you to go to high school, learn, and graduate, and then hopefully you're going off to college. And if you do well in high school to where you could get, like, an athletic, you know, scholarship or something like that, then you could use that to pay for college. Now, all of a sudden, these kids are complaining because they feel mom and dad is on top of them too much. And th that's why I don't get it because I'm not a parent. I'm sure you as a parent, if your daughters are into some sort of sport, even if it's not gymnastics, whatever the case may be, you as a parent are going to want to push them as much as you can, especially if you see that they have potential to take it even further to the next level, collegiate, and hopefully maybe pro, you know what I'm saying? But now it's coming down to where these kids are like, 
I don't feel like doing this no more. You know, and that hurts the parents because it's like, dude, I put so much into it. I invested so much into it. And now all of a sudden, you don't want nothing in it. They don't want to practice. They think that they could just be overnight sensations. So the parents, again, who forced, you know, pushing them to say, hey, you should be out there practicing. Why are you not practicing? Jordan didn't make it to the NBA overnight. Jordan would be out there shooting basketball two in the morning, five in the morning, exercising, crafting, you know, perfecting his craft. You know what I'm saying? None of these kids want to do that. So again, when it comes time for the cleats, for the new baseball bat, this and this and that, who they go to? Mom and dad. So slow, and you know, in the conversation, I'm saying to them, I said, it's partly time that we need to let go. Because if they're not going to be willing to put in the commitment to dedicate themselves to it and to appreciate the fact that you're spending thousands of dollars to try to help your child be able to get to that level or even use it as a scholarship to pay for college. What, it, it, it just baffles me, dude. Because again, these kids are just, I don't know what it is. And maybe you could elaborate on it as a parent. But I just feel like it's, they feel like they're, it's supposed to be given to them because it's mom and dad. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I want new cleats, mom and dad should buy me my cleats. If I want, if I want a new pair, a new jersey, mom and dad should just buy it for me. Like, no questions asked. You know what I'm saying? So what, what do you think as a parent, what do you think these parents should do when it gets to that point where, because I, I know they feel bad because it's something, you know, it's, it's a sport that they love as well. You know what I'm saying? And they, you know, our upbringing was way different because if my mom and dad never took me to a, a basketball club, she never took me to like sign up for this so you could, you know, go to basketball camp. None of that stuff was there for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I wanted to be good in basketball, I had to go out and just put, push myself to keep playing basketball to get better in basketball. I would be, I mean, basketball was life for me when I was growing up playing. I used to go in the summertime. We used to stay in the park till like 3, 4 in the morning. I used to see my friends showing up at midnight by themselves just shooting, just shooting around because they want to make the basketball team for high school. You know, they want to do the trial, do well in the trials. But these fucking kids now is like, you know what I'm saying? You're going you're gonna to push it all the way through. And then when your parents telling you, hey, go out and practice or go, go do this, go do that. You look at it as, damn, why are you always on top of me for? Like, just let me be. And I'm just like, you ungrateful little mofos, man. Because, <laughs> you know, they're, they're trying to do so much for you and they're not seeing that. What are your thoughts on that? As yeah, man. Uh, that's something that like kind of worries me in the future, man. Cause like, I don't, you know, right now my daughter's in gymnastics and so she's the same thing, man. She'll be sitting there and being like, Oh, I'm good at this. I'm the best one in my class. And my wife and I, my wife's like, kind of like you little fucker. And, and I'm the same way too. I'm like, Hey man, like, yeah, you might be at this one, but look at those girls over there. They're badass, man. You ain't doing none of their shit. And so we're always trying to teach her to be humble. And I think that's like, it's, it's like a, it's a balance, right? It's like, I'm glad you feel good about yourself, but at the same time frame, I want you to be humble. I don't want you to feel negative about yourself. So it's kind of like, how do you, how do you have that, that, that balance of you right. feel good, you feel confident, but you're humble. And I, I, like I said, and I told my wife, I was like, you know what, like what I'm going to do I was like, Hey, I'm going to be there and I'm going to do this. We'll try to remind her. But the moment she fails at something, that's when we're going to be there. And I think that sometimes has to come in that way too. Like, Hey, once you fail and you start feeling what that feels like, cause you know, like it, it's like anytime you're, you're with anyone, e even in the military, when you're like, you see, you're like more experienced in CO and you start seeing an up and comer coming up and you start mm -hmm. seeing them being like, just, you know, I mean that bravado is just there. And it kind of, you look at everyone's just in there saying time, time will, time will humble you as well. Like time heals wounds, but time will also humble you as well. Cause there's enough of that. So that's kind of what I'm, my, my approach is. Um, and in second of all, like, sometimes I wonder, like some of these kids are like, I don't want to do this no more. I also sometimes wonder, is it because of parents, it's more the parents thing. Now it becomes their, their role. Like I'm a soccer mom. I'm this kind of mom. I'm this kind of dad. And it starts becoming for them instead of the kid having fun and being what it's for. So, 
I'm a little on both. Um, you know, when I was growing up, my mom would be like, she wanted me to play football and she'd be screaming. She had the time of her life. And I was like, hell no, I'm not doing this shit. I'm gonna go play tennis. And the reason why I went to go play tennis was because she had no clue and she would just sit there. And that's what I wanted her to do was just sit there and be a, like, be a parent and not try to be a fan or any of that stuff. And so that's what kind of makes me wonder a little bit about those ones. But, uh, like, yeah, my daughter's in gymnastics. And so one of the things that we're doing really is like, I was like, Hey man, she's obsessed with it. Let's just figure out what she's obsessed with. Now right. she said, you know, tomorrow, Hey, I'm done doing gymnastics. I, you know, that's the one where I have to really think about it and start sitting down and be like, why, what's up? Why don't right. you like it? You know, what are you doing? But at the same time frame, like, I don't want to force my kid either to do a sport they don't like to do. Right. But I don't want them to quit easily. So it's, man, I wish I had that, that answer, man. It's just, man, into your face with that stuff. It's kind of like, what do you do? Like, I'm, fuck, I don't know, man. It's, it's, it's man, that's what, what sucks about being a parent, man. It's like one minute, <laughs> you know, one season, they're all into it. You're buying them the gear. And it's fun, right? Like, even though it sucks paying that money for a parent, you actually mm -hmm. like it though, because you get to right. go see your kid do something, man. And as a parent, you love seeing your kid go out, try something, get better and see the rewards. Um, like my daughter, we talked to her gymnastics, um, and they were saying like, yeah, so every, pretty much every semester in school, she has a chance to increase. So the beginning of school, she has one semester. Right now she's in the second semester, right before summer. And in summer she'll have another one. So that's my wife's like, you know, within one year, she has three, ti three times to really see how well her, her work ethic has been put off and all those things. Like, I like that. Um, but if she was to be like, hey, I don't like this no more. It depends, right? Is it like, you just really don't like it or it got hard. And because you thought you were the shit, you got faced with it. Okay, then you can't quit. But if you're just like, no, nah, man, just I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying drawing too much. Okay, cool. I rather, I rather, you know what I mean? It's, it's like that kind of weird one. Um, yeah. But it's, 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 but oh, does, man, she, it's like does she look at it like mom, dad, why are you always on me? Does she look at it or she still, you think she's still too young to understand that? Oh, that because meant, like, I mean, they're, they're at the, they're at the age now to where it's competition. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Varsity. JV, whatever, like you're going around playing against other school, like it's competitiveness. You know right. what I'm saying? So you would think from taking your mom or dad's advice, especially if that was a sport that they're into before, like they were in it and whatnot. Why won't you take that knowledge? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't understand why the kids are seeing it as why is mom and dad on me? Does well, she see it like that? Or she's just like, she doesn't know any different. Not yet, but you know, sometimes I do wonder like if, and this is something I go back and I, and I, I don't know if most people think about it like this, but if a parent's like, Hey, the kid's not listening to me. It's like, what are you showing the kid that you, that you know, up to date information, right? If you're just like, Hey, you got to play hard, work hard. And you just come home to work and you go to sleep. Like what, what really does that kid have? Like, I, you know, that's why I push back. It's kind of like, what are you showing your kid where they know a lot of information or they're getting stuff from you and being like, Oh, wow you practice what you preach in a sense, right? If you're, if you're sitting there saying like, Hey, you got to work, you got to work up early. You got to do this. You got to do it. And you're like, dude, you wake up late every day. You go to work and come home right. and that's it. Like your life's not this. And I think that's what kids start comparing themselves and start looking at their, their parents. I don't know. I don't know these people, so I don't know. But that's one thing I would, I would start wondering is that, you know, you got a parent who's like, Hey, you got to work hard. Hey, watch what you're eating, do these things. And you're looking at them and being like, bro, you're 60 pounds overweight, you're <laughs> sloppy, you know what I mean? And these are exaggerations, right. of course, <laughs> right, for right, everything, right. right? But you get what I'm saying? Like, you start looking at someone's telling you, like, hey, you got to be de disciplined, dedicated, and you don't look disciplined or dedicated, dude, you automatically lost people. The mo it don't even have to be your kids. So, it, But it's even more for your kids where it's like, man, you're saying about living this lifestyle, about you got to live like an athlete, train, do all these things. They're looking at you and being like, well, you're not even that. They're not even close to that shit, you know? Yeah. But at the same token, and I and I and I feel I feel their frustration because the the money part is where it's like I'm investing this amount in you because I can see the potential in you to go far. Right. How you are not seeing that I want you to be better, even though even though I understand what you're saying, like the the example needs to be set. But like you said, if I don't see you preaching what you what you're saying or practice what you preach you know what i'm saying like of course i'm not gonna do it but right. then the parent comes around and says well this is for you you know what i'm saying it, it needs to be on you because you're you're now active in this sport not right. me my days are behind me i already needed to do what i needed to do that's why i'm working to provide for you to be able to get far on the sport that you're in because honestly 
these parents could just say no, no more. Yeah. If you're not going to do it, then I'm not going to pay for those cleats. I'm not going to pay for those bats. I'm not going to pay for those jerseys. I'm not going to pay for none of that because who's, who makes the money? Not you, me. So yeah. if I'm a parent and I tell you, Hey, son, daughter, go out and do your, you know, and I, I'm not telling you to go out the whole night, maybe one hour, take an hour out of the day because you're, you're, you're on the PlayStation or whatever for 20 hours, take one hour out of the day just to go out there and just practice. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, show me that the money I'm investing in you and the, and the, and the confidence that I'm trying to put onto you, that you are actually going to do something with it. So I could see the frustration, but I'm just like, I just want these kids to understand that the, the parents doing this is not to frustrate you kids is not the parents yeah. are not doing it to pick on you. The parents are not doing it out of spite. Understand that the parents are doing it because they want to see you succeed. They yeah. want to see you advance. You know how great that is that if you could get a scholarship because you played soccer from high school, whatever, to go into college to help pay for your school based off of that. And then you're going to turn around and be like, oh, fuck this. Well, I don't want this shit no more. You know, like two things on that one, man. Like you said, it, it's, you know, as a parent, man, like your kids looking at you all the time, man, to, to think mm -hmm. that you're sitting there saying my days are behind me. As a parent, no, they're fucking not, man, because that, that kid doesn't know the difference. That kid doesn't have the 15, 20 years of experience that you do, and, and you try to relate. I mean, try to talk to a 10-year-old and relate 10 years for them. They're like, what the fuck? That's, that's how long I've been alive. Right. You and I talk in, in, in 10 years, and we can understand that a lot better because we're older. We've experienced multiple ones, right? But like, if a 70-year-old person was talking to me about 50 years, it's hard for me to understand and comprehend it because I don't have that much time yet. And so I think that that A is number one thing. You're, you're right. dealing with kids that are like, and I say this all the time, and it sounds mean, but they're dumb as fuck. Like they're they're kids. They don't really know better. And that's a problem is people want these kids to be something they're not. And it's like they're kids. Of course right. they're selfish. Why? Because they're the only thing that matters right now to them. Their world is, man. Lisa didn't like me. My world is over with. And then, and unfortunately, it's it's causing some some like long term damage. But right. the thing is though, they're 15, 16 years old. Like, well, they don't appreciate it. Of course they don't. They're fucking like. That's the that's that's the beauty of it though. That's I mean that's the great thing about being a kid is why you don't have responsibilities. But in four or five years, shit's gonna change. Mm -hmm. And so th there's that one right. Like you you always like even as a parent man, and they're like, well, I'm tired. Like, I don't, sorry man. If you want to have a kid that goes and goes get it, they're going to look for examples. It's right. either they look at you or they look for someone else on TV. That's just how it fucking goes. And if you're sitting there saying like, hey, man, I want you to go spend an hour, then they're going to look at you and sit there and say, why don't you do something for an hour? Because if you're just sitting at home watching TV and you're like, well, I worked. I provided this for you. Like, well, I went to school. I did what you asked me to do. This, <laughs> yeah, you, you know what I mean? Like, it's the same kind of exchange. Right, you're right. asking me to do extra. You do right. extra. <laughs> and so that is a conundrum in a sense. And. You know, and two, a lot of times people are like, why well, invested this much into you? And it's like, at what point did I start investing my investment into you? And I started making it about me and not you. Right. Because maybe, you know, it's the same well, like, I want you to go to college and get a scholarship and kids like, I don't want to do this shit forever. Like, because the realistic is like being competitive, collegiate competitor is a lot different than high school competitive. Like you're, mm -hmm. you're on another level. That's right. why when someone's like, oh, they did this in, in college, it was like, Ooh, cause everyone does everything in high school, but to take the next level. And it's like, yeah, you might see the potential, but maybe your kid doesn't want to do this shit. Maybe they look at it and say, they're saying, that's not, I don't feel like waking up at five in the morning to train, go to school and then, da, 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 and then practice and then still do more schoolwork. Like maybe I don't want that work and maybe so. And so like it, sometimes parents almost make it like it becomes about them. Why well, want you to go to college on this? And it's like, dude, I don't like, I, you know what I mean? It's like, and that's, it, that's, that's a hard part about being a parent is you see your mistakes and you're trying to right. and push so much knowledge into that kid to not make your mistakes. Right. But then it's like, but that kid's journey is his own journey. Like, just like my journey is my own journey. And you start finding it enough you, or you start pushing down so much on that kid. They're going to go find somewhere else to go make their own journey. And they're going to leave. You know what I mean? That's like, whenever you see it, like, um, like, a, like a, a woman, a mother who just like her boy and just smothers him and does a shit. You're like, man, that kid might leave. And when he leaves, he's going to have to break away because he needs to go be his own man and be his own journey. And I think that's really a, a really big conundrum, man, for a lot of parents is like, when is too much, when is it, when does it stop being about the, the welfare of the kid and start becoming about what I want that kid to learn from, from me. And then you start putting too much of me into the point. 
Yeah, I think I think there needs to be some sort of a balance between it because you're right. Uh, I see like they they get frustrated because they're sort of living through them again. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like they're remembering when it was their time and they wish they could have done ABC. Now they look yeah. at it as, okay, now I have a chance to do ABC with yeah. this child. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so man. if I could make sure that this child does the, the things that I wanted to do in the past, we could go on the right path. But they, like you said, it can't be about you. It has to be about them. And sometimes you need to just let go. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You just need to say, I'm done. You're going to have to make the decision that comes to sports. You're going to have to make it on your own. So yeah. if you don't want to play no more, then, hey, let me know now so that way I'm not spending thousands of dollars. No. But it needs to come from you. Don't look at it as, oh, the reason why I'm quitting is because dad or mom were always telling me to go practice. No, that can't, that can't be it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But I just want these kids to understand that when the parents are on you like that, it's not to belittle you. It's not to be mad at you. They're not – that. this is not really parenting. This is sort of like them wanting – sharing their wisdom for you to be better. Because, again, Jordan didn't go to the NBA because he did outstanding in high school. You know what I'm saying? Jordan went to the NBA because he committed himself day in and day out to go out there and practice his, his form, how to shoot, make sure my form is right, how to dribble, how to pass, how to do A, B, C, whatever the case would be. So when it came time to play, he was okay to drop 50 points because he made sure on the off time he was busting his ass to do that. So, but I feel bad because I'm going to flip the script here and it's going to probably get a little bit serious. Again, I'm picking your head as a parent. So Cain Velasquez, I don't know if you've seen the news. He's a UFC MMA fighter. This dude is possibly going to do jail time. I don't know if the, the verdict came through. I think somebody told me he was not guilty or whatnot. But this man went and killed some dude. I think it was a stepfather of one of his relatives. And apparently the stepfather was molesting this minor. So Cain Velasquez went and was like, this ain't happening and killed some dude. I think he went to shoot at the stepfather. The stepfather is going to survive. Like, I, I don't think he killed him or whatever the case may be. And I get his frustration. Again, I'm not a dad, but as an uncle, God forbid, if something like that happened to one of my nieces or nephew, I know there would be rage inside of me. You know what I'm saying? I don't think I, I don't know if my reaction would go as far as to fucking shoot somebody. Mm -hmm. My reaction would probably go as far as to fucking beat somebody's ass. But what do you think as a parent? Like, God forbid, I know your other daughter, you know, she's over in Japan or anything else. If you heard something like that or even... New, but that was brought to light to you. How you think will you react? You think Cain Velasquez was wrong to come out like that? I mean, besides the shooting, yeah, but do you feel like his frustration was right? It was justified for him to do that? Nah, man. I mean, I think that's pretty on point. Like, it's, you know, it's one of those ones where, man, because if you really think about the long term effects on that child, right? If you really mm -hmm. like, and it's going to get like, you know, get to that point, man, like, that kid's fucked. Man, and if you start looking at most molesters, like where like they were molested themselves, like it's just a vicious fucking cycle, dude. Like it's it's rough, man. Like when you start going that route, man, it's uh oof. You know, like if you just think about the kid for a second, like what they experience, like they're never the same. And right. man, you got some that are like fucking young, like young, like fucking like and these are some sick fucks. And some of these some of these sick fucks, when you look at them, man, they, they got molested themselves and that's why they do what they do, man. It just fucking something happened and fucking wires were never the same. You know what I mean? It's, it's, and you know what I mean? Like you see that as a kid, like that's definitely therapy. You're in therapy for a long fucking time, man. Like I don't, you know, some people for sure can, can handle it and do those ones. But mm -hmm. you know, I, I think when it comes to this part and we see rage like that, like, you know, and, and it also depends too. Like, it's like, if you, if this was a happen and you were mad and you couldn't get to that person different, right? But right. if you could get to that person, I do believe there is a, there's a thing where you could be tem temporarily insane in a sense or just see red and you're right. just going out and doing what you think is the most logical thing at that moment with so much emotion, which is, can't happen, right? Like, just cannot happen. And, you know, you take a second to look at who he is. UFC champion, heavyweight, like a badass, mm -hmm. um, probably has brain damage in that sense. And so maybe some of those things in the head are not the same either. Like those, some of those wires that would calm him down. And also when you've been like a cage fighter, like you, you, 
violence isn't like for you. And this is what I mean like that. Like for you to go and beat the shit out of somebody that's outside of your norm. But when that was your day job for years on years on end, and that's what you train to do it, I don't think it becomes like that far of a leap. You know what I mean? Like for certain people, there's some people that are like really violent individuals and there's some people that have committed violence and there's a difference between having to go that levels, I think. Um, so I, you know, do I agree with it? Like, yeah, man, as a father, you know, you, you hope you don't cause more pain for your family, but I mean, like I said, if some, if you were to, you know, catch somebody in the act, what do you do? Mm -hmm. And I, I wish I could be that person and be like this. Like, I, I don't know, man. I have no fucking clue. I don't know how, how I would act. I don't know if I would go red. I don't know if I'd be smart enough. I don't even know if I could even fathom, you know, I can't even fathom right. the idea that I'd be able to just articulate a sentence. You know what I mean? Like, I, right. and this is how I look at it too. Like, you're definitely not thinking about being in prison. Right. You know, and I don't think he, I don't think he went got guilty. I would hope not because like California has been like, because of all the shit's going on with Corona, which is, you know, like everything's going on, like they've been putting back cases. So it kind of sucks if he just went speedy trial, um, when right. they've been, you know, doing that. So you yeah, don't know right now, the, the backlash with him is that a lot of the critics are saying they're criticizing him because they're saying he took the law in his own hands, but who would it, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you said, because his job 24 hours a day was violence. His upbringing was tough. You know what I'm saying? Living in the hood, coming up, probably having to fight his way through life and everything else. So he resorted to let me become a fighter because that's what I know. That's what I'm good at is fucking people up. Yeah. So of course, now you put him, now he's a celebrity status, which kind of hurts him as well because now you're a well-known figure in the world. You know what I'm saying? Because if you and I would have done that, we we probably wouldn't get the, the criticism like he's getting right now because he's a celebrity and we're not. But honestly, like, it's fucked up that it's happening to him, but I I, I agree with what he did. I don't, I don't agree with the shooting part, but I agree with him saying I need to take action because yeah. there's no way that you could just come and violate my family and just let it be. Because yeah. I think there was something in there in the articles, too, that we're talking about that the stepfather basically got um, let go. Like, he went through the courts and everything, and they released him. Like, there was nothing bad or anything like that. So that's what made it even more enraged in him because he's like, yo, we did the due process, and now this dude is still walking the streets. There's no way. Yeah. So, of course, his mentality is like, no, this has, there has to be payback. And I agree with the payback. I don't think it was sufficient enough for him to go and shoot. I think if he would have just went and busted the dude up, that I think that would have been su suffice in itself. But then again, you know, it's hard because as a celebrity, you can't just go up to anybody and punch them in the face. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because you're well known now. Your name, if somebody says, yo, Cain Velasquez fucked me up, you're in trouble. Yeah. You're going to get in trouble. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And there's not going to be enough money to fucking get you out of jail when, because now they're looking at the gun charge crimes. You know what I'm saying? Like, he he shot somebody. He was carrying a gun. I don't even know if it, if he had a you know concealed a carry or anything like that. Like there's just building charges on top of charges. Besides the fact that he wanted to do it because this person violated his family. Yeah. The courts ain't gonna see it like that. They're not gonna sympathize with that. They're just gonna see it. You broke laws and that's it. But I mean, it's it's fucked up what he's going through, man. I would you know I wish Cameron Lasquez doesn't have to deal with it. I'm 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 glad that he did that. He did take action to that. But I, I think maybe a little bit extreme, who knows? Because again, if it was, if it happened to me or you, who knows how the fuck we will react? You yeah. know what I'm saying? I know we'll definitely be enraged. I don't know if my reaction would be like, yo, get the fucking Glock and I'm shooting homeboy. I don't know that, but I know we will be pissed. Like, yo, we need to, we need to hurt this person. Yeah. I know everybody mentality. Like, yeah, I'm not a dad. I'm an uncle, but my mentality would be like, I, we need to hurt this person. Yeah. However it may be, but we need to hurt this person. Yeah, definitely for, for man, for pedophiles, man, I have zero, zero love for those fucks. So man, every one of them, e e even, you know, uh, man, I have a really aggressive stance on that part. And I think you just take them out back and shoot them. And again, I think it's a disease. I think a lot of them, it, like, it, I think it happened to them and that's what goes on. Right. But man, the moment you fuck with a kid, nah, man, we can't have you on the earth no more. Like, I, I yeah. think that's like a, a, a really dark stain. And I think your your soul can never recover from that, cause especially if you're taking a pure of innocence of a kid. 
I think there's a there's no special place for you in hell. I think we just throw you out back like trash, and I think we should treat it that way too. So mine's a pretty aggressive stance. I have I have zero love, zero fucks for any kind of person who hurts children. So, and that's even if you just you know that's that's that, and that's even if you just like push a kid, like same thing in a sense, yeah. man. Like if you if you hurt innocent people, man, like we should just take you out back and shoot you. That's my that's my personal opinion. Oh, so yeah, let's zero. <laughs> well, it, it's like you know, like death penalty is like nah, man. I think you should just yeah. like be egregious with it and just like literally just take someone out back and just shoot them. You know what I mean? It's like, boom, and you're done. Yeah. Is that aggressive? Yes. Is that probably a little too far? hundred percent. But it's also like, you got to Like, you know, like we're, we're right now in a society now where we start looking at crimes and we start forgetting, man, like, Hey man, like it's, it's, it's not black and white, but at the same time frame, you hurt somebody, right? That's wrong. Okay, cool. You take the innocence of a child. That's fucking wrong. Like I believe kids are magical in a sense. That's why, you know, like believing in right. Santa and doing all these things are magical, man. Like let a kid. And that's why I'm kind of having that, that opinion earlier. I'm like let kids be kids, man. Like at the same time frame, like there's going to be a point in time where like me right now, I'm not, I'm not like I'm working or not as much as I can. I'm tired all the time. I'm not worried about being happy and like unicorns and that type of shit. I'm worried about making sure it was family set up. And so the re reason I bring that up is because like, there's, there's going to be enough time in this world where you have to be an adult, have fun. And if somebody who takes away that innocence and that, that kind of sparkle in the world that we need, fuck it, man, just put them out with trash, man. And just let them become like, just put them somewhere, let them come that, put some flowers over their grave and let them actually feed the, the earth with like, and try to become, bring something back. But I think it's a horrible thing they do, man. I think it's a dark stain. And, and, and you know, if he actually tried to call the cops and the dude got away with it, I think that's something that people are not talking about either. Cause that's like, Hey, mm -hmm. that changes a lot more for me. It does. Like you, wow. if you tried to do the right thing and, and, you know, I mean, it's one thing if you were in the, you caught them in the act or something like that, but if you tried and call the cops and try to go in which route, which actually, believe it or not, I, I've heard a couple other stories that happens. They actually try doing the right thing. And guess what? The law yeah. doesn't really like really kind of do anything, which is weird. Um, it's just kind of the, the complete things that it seems like, but if you went to the law and you did those things and they didn't do it that way. Yeah, mm -hmm. man. Um, you're, and you felt that was right. You know, now if you went shooting and like, let's say you went through a drive by, you know, my personal opinion, if you were to do that, I would sit there and say, Hey, if you went to go there, go bust them up. You should probably just use your hands because a, you're, you're, yeah. you know, intimidating figure. And that's probably going to be a lot less damage, like, you know, because now you have weapon charge, like you're saying. So I would think. But again, like, you don't know. One night he was sitting there drinking and then just looked at his gun and said, nope, here we go. And then yeah. who's going to stop you at that point? Like, that guy's that big dude. Is his wife or any guy that can be like, hey, don't do it. Like, you know, so I don't know. That's my thoughts on yeah. that. Yeah. It's, and it's, and it sucks because you never seen his name anywhere in the news. You know what I'm saying? Like the man knew I'm in a, I'm in a business to make money by fighting and I'm just going to make sure I take care of my family. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So every time he made money, he got endorsements. He was doing commercials. Then he switched over to wrestling. He was doing WWE for a little while. So the man knew like he was like, yo, I got a good life. I need to maintain this life. I'm not going to do anything to ruin it because again, you never saw any consistency with his name next to bad things. You know what I'm saying? Onto this one fucking incident. And it sucks because this incident is, is going to stain him for probably the rest of his life. You know, with him trying to do any other businesses or anything like that is going to suck.